Hi, this is Brian and Levi, and today we're going to show you how to install Beamer Tech soft closed doors on an F30. All right, good job. Whenever you're working on any electrical components in your car, it's always a good idea to remove the negative battery terminal. So go ahead and do this with a 10 millimeter wrench, and then simply pull off the terminal. So for this installation, we're going to start with the front doors. So therefore, we're going to start by removing some of the trim from the rear and working our way, our way forward. So the first piece of trim we want to move is, is this piece right here. So to remove this, you gently pull up on the seat. Then there's a, a black fastener. You remove the center piece, and then the rest of it will pop out. So here's what that fastener looks like. What you do is you just simply remove that that middle pin, and then the rest of it will just pop up. What you can do is just gently lift up and remove this piece. There are one, two, three, four clips that hold it in place. Um, most of the time they will get stuck in the vehicle, so what you need to do is just go back with pliers, pull these out, slide them back into the channels, and then everything will fasten right back together. Okay, so while you're here, what we want to do is you want to remove this um, piece of plastic that guards the seat belts. To do that, you just have to release two pins. There's a plastic pin about right here, and there's another one about over here. So what you want to do is just, just take your hands underneath, and then just go ahead and pop this side up. And then once we get to the front, we can go ahead and release this clip as well. Okay, now what we need to do is remove this trim, and then we can go ahead and finish removing this piece. So just reach your hand under and lift up. And again, there's just four clips. Um, if, they, if they do get stuck, again, just pull them out with pliers, slide them into the channels, and everything will clip right back in. Okay, now what you want to do, again, that other clip is right about there. So just reach your fingers under here and pop that. Then what you want to do is just pull this piece down, and you can slide it right out of the way. And here you can see the locations of the plastic fasteners. On the top, you just have a, a little bit of a clip. So what you do when you reinstall is you just slide it back up and then pop everything back into place. All right, next what we need to do is remove the two 10 millimeter nuts. There's one right here, and then there's one right over here. So go ahead and remove those. Once those have been removed, go ahead and take a trim tool and gently pry this piece down. Uh, there are three metal fasteners on top, and then it just slides in the back. So if you just slide it out, you'll be able to just drop it down a little bit. Okay, now go ahead and remove the three connections. So remove the light, remove the speaker. Sometimes these can be a little bit difficult to, to remove. And then to remove the OBD2, what you want to do is take this tab and you just pull it up. And then that, that'll unclip from there. And that'll enable you to take this, this piece completely out of the car. Okay, now what you want to do is either get a Phillips head screwdriver or Phillips head drill bit, and you're going to remove this Phillips head bit here that holds this piece of plastic in place. And then once we remove that, we have one more to remove. Okay, so once you've removed that first screw, this entire piece pops off, and then you'll, you'll see the second one. Okay, then you can remove that. And this piece will, will come right off. There's only um, two clips that hold this one in place. Once you pull this off, go ahead and unclip the, the trunk release. And you can move this piece out of the way. I have some other products in my car, so you may not have these cables here. All right, so once you've done that, we can go ahead and move on to the door panels. What you need to be able to access, if you, if you open your door, you're going to see a wire harness that goes into the car. And then you just need to reach up and feel it on the other side. So it's just, it's just right over here where you can see my hand. So once, once you've done that, we'll go ahead and I'll show you how to take the door panels off. All right, at this point, we're ready to go ahead and remove the door panel. So to do this, what we need to do is you need to remove the wood trim. Um, some cars have, have plastic, some have metal. Um, but my, mine, you can see, is wood. And it's very fragile, so I'm going to show you how to remove the door panel, and specifically this piece, without damaging it. So the way that you want to do this is um, you'll notice that once you take the piece off, there's a small clip up here and then there's a larger clip down here. You always want to make sure that you clip this in first, 
and then snap it down. And then to remove it, you want to do the opposite. You want to remove the bottom first and then slide it out from the top. So to do this, what you want to do is if you look under here, you'll see a very small hole. And what this hole is going to do is it's going to give you access to a metal clip that's holding it in place. If you don't take this off, you will break off the bottom clip. Okay, so now what you need to do is you need to find something small enough that will maneuver into that hole. I have a T25 key. So what you need to do is go ahead, just very carefully, you don't want to scratch anything, insert it straight up. And then you're going to feel a metal clip inside. So you can go ahead and, and push that out of the way. And then what you can do is you can release the bottom and then slowly go along with your hands to the top and then you can, you can slide this piece out. Okay, and here's what the piece looks like. So you can see I have the, the larger clip on the bottom and then I also have the smaller clip on the top. Again, when you go to replace it, what you wanna do is you wanna put the top in first and then clip in the bottom. So here you can see what you'll actually be doing. You can see right here is the, where the notch is. So what you wanna do is you wanna slide up uh, a small uh, object, whether it be an Allen key or something or a small screwdriver. And then what you wanna do is you wanna press this clip in and that's going to be able to release the other clips on the, the wood trim. The other thing to note is if any of the clips are stuck on the trim, what you can do is you can just gently pull these off. And you can just go ahead and clip these back on the door. And that'll make it a little bit easier when you go to, to reassemble everything. Now what you want to do is you want to go ahead and remove the two T25 screws. So there's one right here and there's also one right up here. Now what I noticed right now, I've never taken this door panel off, is I'm actually missing a screw. Uh, but your car should have one there. So I, in my case, I'm just going to go ahead and remove, remove the one. So what I like to do is I like to start on, on the bottom here. So just go ahead and, and very carefully insert your trim tool and then you'll be able to get your hand in there. Okay, and then just go ahead just very carefully unclip all of these, these fasteners. All right, so once you've released all of the fasteners on the, on the side, and it's just hanging on by the top, what you want to do is you want to remove this control panel. So to do so, find the, um, the thinnest trim tool that you can find. The Beamer Tech one with the flat edge works, works the best because what you can do is you can go ahead and slide it in. And then what you want to do is gently pry up the front and then slide out the back. And the reason for this is because there's, there's a tab in the front that secures it in place and the rear just has these pins. So this is going to be a lot easier to work with than trying to pull these pins up first, although it is possible. Once you're here, go ahead and, and, and press in this little button here and then slide the lever down and then this will come completely off. At this point, what you can do is you can actually go ahead and pull the rest of the door panel off. Um, traditional doors on other cars, sometimes you lift them up and then move them off, off the car. With, with, the, with the BMWs, what you wanna do is you actually wanna pull them straight out. Don't worry about this because it'll, it'll bend with the door panel. Okay. So you can see here, this, this will actually bend and, and flex, so you don't have to worry about breaking that. And then when you go to reinstall it, what you wanna do is you just press into these clips and that'll hold everything in place while you're working. All right, so once you're here, you have, you have three additional connections. So go ahead and remove the door light and then we're going to move, remove the puddle light. This is the harness that we, we already removed. Just go ahead and pull that out. And then this is the actual door latch. So to remove this, it's very easy. You just pull it up. When you want to reinstall it, what you do is you slide this piece of metal into that groove and then just snap it back in place. So it's, it's very easy to work with. So once you've done that, you can go ahead and, and move your door panel out of the way. So what you want to do is you want to go ahead and just go ahead and just gently lift up on, on this down here. Be careful not to, not to tear the foam. Uh, what you want to do is you want to just go ahead and go along the bottom and release it because we need to work in this area. This area is where the actuator is going to get uh, mounted. Um, one thing to note on these is they are marked with an L and an R for left and right. So left is driver's side. Um, in the US at least, it's on, it's on the left-hand side. And then R would be 
on the, the passenger side. So what we're going to do is we'll just go ahead and gently pull this up. For the most part, it, it actually does come up pretty clean. Um, you'll have some spots that are, that are a little bit splotchy. It all depends on the, on the weather too, on how, how hard or soft it is. All right, so just to help you see what's going on more, I ended up taking mine completely off. Um, again, you, it's not something that you have to do, uh, but it's gonna help you be able to see what, what I'm doing. Now go ahead and remove the three T30 bolts. So what you want to do is you want to go ahead and, re and remove this plug here. It has a clip on the top and the bottom, so if you have small fingers, you might be able to get them both. Then I, I have to use two hands to kind of pull that out. So in the door, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what, what I'm doing. Um, so first, there's, there's a clip right here, if you can see that. Uh, I don't think I'll be able to do it while holding the camera. But I'm going to have to go back, and I'm going to pop that out. And then the other thing I need to do is if you, if you see this, this white line right here, this is actually how you open the door from the outside. So what you want to do is you want to go ahead and, and pull this bottom piece towards you and then unclip it up, up here at the top as well. And then when you go to reinstall um, your new assembly, what you want to do is you want to make sure that, that you plug it in uh, on, on the top here and then on the bottom. All right, so I'm going to go back in now. I'm going to release that one clip and then also pull, pull this off here. All right, so I, I got the, the clip off and I got the bottom, got the bottom piece of that one cable. All right, and there's the top. And then the front of it has, um, it, it's just a sealant, but it, it can get a little bit stuck, so don't be afraid to try to wiggle that out of there. And then there's just one more, there's just one more white clip here. All right, then what you want to do is go ahead and just pull this out. Um, be very careful with this. You, you never want to press against the door because you can actually dent your door outwards. So you, you'll look at your car and you'll have a, a little a bit of a dimple. So the, the best way to get it is to actually um, rotate it upside down and then pull the long side out and then try to, to try to twist it around that corner there. So that, that's the easiest way to, to get that back out. All right, so here's the latch for the outside. You can see, if you watch here, when I, when I pull the handle, it actually moves this piece here. So what you're going to do is, is you're going to go ahead and, and install this on the inside of your door. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take this piece, you're going to clip the top in the top section here, and then you're going to go ahead and snap the bottom into the bottom section. So you can see. All right, so now what we need to do is we, go, we need to go ahead and, and get this all set up. So ultimately, this piece needs to go like this. So you, ha you have your latch facing this direction, so it's going to, to sit into the door like this. Now it's very tight once you get it in here, and you'll, and you'll see that, but it's still very workable. So what you want to do is you want to you take the unit, you want to turn it like this. You want to slide this behind this, this metal bar, then you want to pivot it, and then what you're going to have to do is actually turn it upside down just because of how um, the metal is shaped here. And then that's going to be able to uh, allow you to position it into place. Go ahead. You can see that that went right in. Okay. You just set that back down there. Turn it upside down, then bring it back, and then don't forget that, that wire, um, the cable that actually is connected to the outside of the car. You don't want that to get pinched or anything. Okay, so then you can go ahead, position this in place, and then what I like to do is I like to 
put this screw in right here just to help me hold hold everything together okay now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and and feel for this wire to the top, the top is in. Okay, you heard that snap, now the bottom, the bottom is in. Okay, and I feel it moving. So that's a, that's a really good sign. Then what you can do, you can go ahead and put this back in. Okay, and the little the little um, notch goes on top when you go to put that back in. And you can you can take this piece right here. And again, you just you just hook it on. You pull this from underneath and then you're all set with that. So then what we can do is we can go ahead and put the other uh, two screws in here and then this piece is, is all set and then we'll show you how to mount this. All right, so on the front, what you need to do is when you have your actuator, you wanna make sure that this wire right here is on this side of this metal bracket. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove this 10 millimeter nut. We're going to feed this wire underneath, and then we're going to go ahead and, and mount it back. So go ahead with a, a 10 millimeter socket. Remove this nut, just be very careful. Push the wires up here. Now they'll be in, in front. And you can go ahead and install this nut here. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to mount the actuator. So you'll notice that there are um, three screws sticking out. So what you want to do is go ahead and line them up. Then take the supplied nuts. First, just hand thread those on. And then secure them with an eight millimeter socket. All right, now what you wanna do is go ahead and switch to a 10 millimeter. Just carefully remove, remove this nut here. that's going to slip on just like that and then just hand thread this nut back on tighten it up a little bit and then what we're going to do is we're going to take a t20 and we're going to go ahead and remove this screw so that's our other mounting location this through here. All right. You just go ahead and tighten that back. And if it's on a little bit of an angle, that's okay because your door panel will, will fit nicely back on there. And then this is this is in a good spot to where your window will clear it nice. 
All right, so now at this point, what we're ready to do is we are ready to uh, run the wiring. So go ahead and grab, go ahead and grab one of the, the longer cable. All right, so now go ahead and just take that wire. I'm just going to feed it down around here. Now run it along here. So we'll just zip tie it every so often just to make sure that it, it stays out of the way. All right, so what, once you're about this far, what you need to do is you need to reach back here and you need to lift, lift, lift this piece of plastic off. Uh, there's a little, there's a, a piece of plastic that slides down and this is actually what secures everything in place. So what you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and, and pry this up, again, both on, on the left and the right side. On the front, it's a little bit more difficult than the back, but overall, it's, it's not very difficult. Okay, at this point, you're, you're going to want to have a, a pick tool ready. Just go ahead and slide it under this rubber. And just very, very gently pull it off. So that you'll, you'll have some exposed wires. Uh, next thing you want to do is to get these wires through the door. There's just another grommet, so you can just go ahead and pull that out. And just reach your hand in the door. All right, so now that we've got the wire uh, through through the door, what we need to do is we need to get it through this this rubber tube right here. So you could either there's a couple ways you could do it. You could probably just um, feed feed it through uh, if you just pinch the rubber as you go and just make make a little bit of a pocket. Um, sometimes the, the inside of these can be um, quite sticky. So sometimes it's best if you can use some kind of, of wire feeder, um, but because it's so short, it, it's very uh, it's very doable, as you saw, I just did it pretty quickly, um, to just feed it through and you don't have to waste any extra time. All right, so here's a closer look at what we're doing uh, as far as, as pinning. Um, so what you wanna do first, after you, after you pull this out, is you want you want to slide this cover off so there's there's two tabs that's secured in place there's one right here and there's one right here so to do this all you need to do is just get a trim tool just gently release this and then this will slide right off and this will make your life much easier then what you want to do you'll notice on the pins that they have a it's like a square with a, a piece of metal sticking out so what you want to do is just find find two open ports and just go ahead and just get these just slide them right in and you'll, you'll hear them click into place. All right, so once both pins are in there, what you wanna do is just take this cover again, line everything up, clip it into place. Just make sure all the wires are out of the way. You can just press it down, press it in. Make sure that you, you re-secure the, the rubber here, and then we're ready to do the inside. All right, for this, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and push the tab on the top and then it's going to pivot back and, and rock back. All right, so once you have this, you wanna just go ahead and again, pull off that, that blue cover. That just makes sure that everything is nice and secure. And what you wanna do is you wanna take your wire and then same, same as the other side, uh, what you wanna do is you wanna just make sure that you line up your pins. Just go ahead, and press them in until you hear a click. Just make sure that they're lined up with how the other side is. Everything looks good. And if you look in here, you can see the, it might be a little bit difficult to see, but uh, the pins that I've inserted are fully sticking out. You wanna make sure that they're all the way down and clipped in, otherwise you're not going to get a good connection. Then go ahead and, and slide this clip back on. And then on, what you'll notice on this, just like we took it out, you need to put the bottom in first because it's actually, it's more of a square plastic. So you, you, you put the bottom in first and then you rotate it forward and then this clip is going to lock into place. All right, so once you've finished pinning the, the, the inside connection, what you wanna do again is go ahead and push the bottom through, and then what you wanna do is just go ahead and, and clip the rest through. 
then take your connection on the outside make sure that this piece is, is all the way up that's what's going to lock everything in place and then once everything is lined up make sure you push it all the way back because you want to make sure that you have a, a nice tight seal and then go ahead and, and seal everything shut by pushing that that piece of plastic back down until it clicks in place and it's nice and secure that's going to make sure there's no, be no moisture or water getting in then what you want to do is you want to take the rest of the cable and you want to route it underneath the carpet and then just keep routing it all the way back and just round it all the way back to the back seat. All right, so once you're done up there, you can go ahead and put your door panel back together. So just go ahead and make sure that you, you make all of the connections and don't forget to put this connection in here. Then what you wanna do is you wanna, you wanna tilt this up, put the door panel on top of here and then press it into these and then that's going to be able to hold it for you while you, you line up all of the other clips. All right, so now we're, we're done with the front door, so we're going to go ahead and, and do the exact same thing with the rear door. So again, find, find a small tool to insert in this hole here. All right, so once you remove the wood trim, what you want to do is take a T25 bit, remove the top screw first, and then you can go ahead and remove the bottom screw here. Then what you want to do is take a trim tool and just gently, gently insert it under the, the window switch in the front. Because what we need to do is we need to un, undo one of these, um, one of these switches here. So go ahead and just pull out that plug, and just set that to the side. All right. So once you've removed this switch here, what you want to do is just take your trim tool. I'm going to start at the bottom again. Just gently slide it in, and then when, once you pop one of them, you can just reach your hand in, and you can go ahead and and pop the rest of the fasteners. Okay. And then the same as last time, what we want to do is instead of lifting up, we want to just pull it straight out. And that way everything stays intact. And again, don't worry about this because it will, it will bend with it. All right, so here we are again. So go ahead and, and disconnect the door light. Go ahead and remove the latch. Go ahead and and pull this out. This is for the, the window switch if you haven't done that already. Go ahead and remove the puddle light. Okay. And then you can just go ahead and, and place your, your door panel to the side. Okay, so again, what we need to do is we need to re remove this foam to be able to work. So just go ahead and just very carefully Pull it down. Then once you, once you get it started, uh, for the most part, it, it should pretty much all come up. It won't really leave too much residue. Now, some, some spots it, it, it will, some spots it won't. And again, it all depends on the weather. So I'm just gonna go ahead and... Now you don't need to remove the whole thing, uh, but what, I'm just going to remove the whole thing just so you can see more so what, what I'm doing.
All right, so one, once all of that's disconnected, what you can do is go ahead and, and remove this. Remember, just pull pull down, and then this will unhook. And then just go ahead and just pull that this straight out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to remove those three T30 screws again. Let's go ahead and remove these. Then again, what you'll have to do is you'll have you'll have two of these that are mounted into the the original unit. So you want to go ahead and just remove those. Sometimes you can just pull them with your hands. Sometimes it's a little bit easier to use a trim tool. So I'm just going to pull this first one off here. Okay, so that's off. Then what we need to do is we we need to remove that that latch. So we're going to look for that that white connection again. Here it is down here. I'm going to remove the top first and then the bottom. Okay. And then we should be able to, <clears throat> once you've done that, you can go ahead and remove this connection here. It just has a, a clip on, on either side. So uh, if your hands are small, you can reach in like this. Otherwise, like me, you'll have to use two hands. All right, so once you've disconnected both of these and then also the cable that connects to the outside door handle. You can just go ahead and just gently lower this down. Just be very careful. There are some other wires in there. You don't want to accidentally nick anything. Then again, grab the one that's stamped left and we're going to go ahead and, and insert it just like this. Um, this one goes in, in much easier than the front does. So you can see there's no real maneuvering. It just goes in pretty easy. Okay, once you have that in, you want to go ahead and, and clip back in uh, that, that white cable. And again, what's going to happen there is the, the top of it will, will get clipped on this, this metal bracket here, and then the bottom will sit in the plastic piece. So I'm just going to go ahead and connect that on here. Okay, so there's the top. Okay, and there's the bottom. Okay, everything looks good. All right, then what you wanna do is go ahead and reinstall those three T30 screws. this connection in. Uh, at, at this point, if you like, you can even hang this back on. And then you can reinsert this. Just remember the slit goes at the top. Okay, now what you want to do is go ahead and, and take your actuator and you're going to find uh, your, your bracket. So w when you're looking at it, the bends of metal that are going in they're going to go uh, in towards the car so it, it's flush on the outside. So let's go ahead and, and just put this in here. So there are just uh, three, three bolts sticking out. You can just go ahead and find, find the nuts that are included in the kit and screw those on. And these are eight millimeters. So once you hand thread them on, go ahead and make sure that they're secure. All right, so once you've secured the bracket, we're going to go ahead and mount it. So what we're going to do is we're going to just take a trim tool and, re and remove this plastic fastener. We're going to, to reuse this hole here, and then we're going to reuse this hole up here. All right, so then once you've released the plastic clips, what you want to do is go ahead and put that piece of metal up there and then just gently slide this in here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the bolts in here just to hold everything in place.
All right, so once this is secure, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're gonna wire everything up. All right, so now what you can do is go ahead and connect, connect the wire. And then I'm just going to feed it behind here. Pull it out through here. And then just go ahead and, and, and zip tie it along the way. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do exactly what we did on the other side. So just go ahead in here. You just release that, that bottom grommet. And go in here. We're going to just very carefully, very evenly, we're going to press up this tab. Now the luxury that you have in, in the back is that you do have the ability Close the door some so you can work it on both sides. So that gave me enough where I could just reach my hand in there. And then I can just go ahead and, and disconnect that. Then on here, just like we did before, you wanna just take your trim tool in here, just twist it up, and then that'll, that'll release everything. Um, while you're down here, you wanna just go ahead and just pull the rubber off there because we're going to need to feed those wires through. So let's go ahead and, and we'll do that now. So just feed your wires through the door again. It might be a little bit easier for you to use some kind of sturdy sturdy wire or a hanger just to help feed these wires through. Um, but because it's so short, it is doable to just feed the wires through as well. So here's one. Here's the other. So pull this back a little bit and just go ahead and drop these in, in the bottom here. And as you move this out of the way, you'll be able to see them pop up. And then what you wanna do is just go ahead and, and lo locate an, an empty spot on this. Um, it looks like there's going to be some, there's going to be some empty space at the bottom here. All right, so when you're doing this, there's actually a piece right here. Uh, there, there's a little clip on the back. So if, if you release that, this will make this process much easier. It just slides on, holds everything in place. So I'll show you how to, how to do the actual pinning. So just go ahead and, and take your pin, line up, uh, line up where the notch is, and then what you want to do is just go ahead and just slowly um, lower that down until you hear a little click. Just go ahead and do it with the other one. All right, then what you can do is you can go ahead and slide this back on. And what this is going to do is it's going to lock everything in place. All right, so when, once you've done that, go ahead and push push these wires out of the way. Push it far back and then lock it in. And once you slid that on, you can go ahead and reinsert this into the door. Make sure it's a nice tight seal. And then just go ahead and, and pull this up here as well. All 
right, so that looks good. And then we'll move on to the inside. All right, so once you have this here, what you wanna do is just go ahead and remove this blue piece right here. What this does is it has some notches in it, and that just makes sure that all of the pins stay in place. Then just do the same thing, just insert these pins in the same location where you mounted the other ones. Just go ahead and slide them in, and they'll click right into place. So you heard those both click. Now what we can do is we can we can slide this this clip back on. And then again, you'll see that there's a, a notch on the bottom and a clip on the top. So when you go to put it through, you want to line the bottom up first, kick the bottom out, and line that up, and then go ahead and, and pivot it into place. Okay, so we have, we have the bottom in, and then the top will go ahead and click. Make sure that this piece is, is up. And what you wanna do is go ahead, make sure you, you have the, the clip all the way up, otherwise it won't go on. And then press that nice and tight. And then what you wanna do is just go ahead and, and press this down, and what that's going to do is it's going to pull the piece of plastic close to the body of the car to make a nice tight seal. All right, so at this point, everything is, is completely wired up. What you wanna do is just take your wire from the front and the rear and just continue running them under the carpet. And then what, what you wanna do is, uh, we, we've already released the, the front of the seat. What you can do is, you don't have to take the whole thing out. You can just slide it over to the side. Um, wh whatever's easier for you. If it's easier for you to just take the entire thing out, you can go ahead and do that. And then what we're gonna do is we're just going to feed these wires underneath the seat and then back up through, through the trunk. Just gonna finish these. And then what you're going to do is once you pull these wires tight, you're just going to push down the seat, make sure everything is, is locked in place, and then we'll move on to the trunk. All right, so when you go to do the other side, everything is pretty much the same. Um, the rear doors are pretty much exactly the same. However, the front door is a little bit different, so I just wanna just take another minute to show you what you're gonna have to do. So you may have to drop this plastic piece again. Again, it's just 10, or it's, it's two 10 millimeter bolts. And then there's this other box right here. And what you need to do is really you need to get on the other side. So if you can see where I have my, my drill bit here, there's actually a T25 screw. So what you do is you loosen that screw up and then you're able to pull this whole panel forward. So you can see I just have it loose right now. I can wiggle it around. So once you take that screw out, you'll be able to, to pull that uh, connection out and then you'll be able to wire your system up. All right, so once you've done all of that, you will have your, your four wires all back here with your, with your power and ground. The next thing we need to do is we need to supply power and then we also need to ground these wires as well. So let's start by grounding them. So for the ground, what we're going to do is we're going to tap into some ground wires that are just on the other side of this carpeting here. Now you can reach your hand up, but just for video purposes, we're just going to go ahead and pull this down. And then right over here, you can see where we're going to be grounding the unit. Okay, for this next part, what we need to do is we need to get this wire on the other side of the carpeting. So what you wanna do is just take some kind of uh, sturdy wire. Just go ahead and, and pull up on the carpet a little bit. And then you just wanna gently feed your wire under here. Okay, and then once you find the other end, what you wanna do is just take some tape. We're just gonna use some painter's tape. Just go ahead and tape that on there. And then just to relieve some of the pressure, just lift up on the carpet and you'll be able to pull that through. The nice thing about painter's tape is it, it rips really easy. Okay, now that you've done that, what you wanna do is go ahead and take your wire tap, just slide it on one of these wires, and feed in your, your new ground. Make sure it's tight, and then just take some kind of pliers, and just squeeze down. Okay. And what you can do is just go ahead, you can close that, and then you're all set there.
Okay, once you've done that, we can go ahead and, and ground the rest of these units. So what you want to do is take all these tabs and just press them all straight up. Then go through. Make sure you twist the end of the, the negative. You want to stick those wires in. And then it'll clamp down and it'll lock in place. So go ahead and do this with all of them. Once you've done that, you can even look on the other side and you can see that everything has a, a nice solid connection and then everything will be nice and snug. Now since we have everything grounded, what we need to do is we need to go ahead and, and tap into the power. So what we're going to do here is we are going to uh, insert this fuse into spot 163. So if you look at the little leaflet, in your car here. You see 163 is right down there, so one, two, three, fourth one down. So what you want to do is find the fourth one down, go ahead and re remove that, and then just press down right there, and that's all you have to do, and that has a built-in fuse. So one, one of the benefits of this is sometimes if you try to insert a wire and then place the fuse and you can stretch out the connection and get a pretty bad connection. So th these are really nice, really handy to use. So then again, what you want to do is go ahead and flip all of these tabs straight up. Go ahead and connect your power. And then do the, the rest of these here. Last one. Go ahead and flip that in. Go ahead and check the back. Everything looks like it's a really nice solid connection. Now what we can do is we can we can zip tie some of these wires and, and hide them a little bit better. And then other than that, we're we're done at this point. Everything is completely wired up and ready for some testing. All right, so at this point everything is completely installed. If you follow our guide, it'll only take you a couple hours to do. Um, one of the nice things is as you can see, I'm at my own home. Um, so you can do it on your driveway, in your garage. You don't need any special tools or a special shop to do this. Again, this is Brian. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, just let us know and we'll be happy to help. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you may also like this one. Also, be sure to visit us online at www.beamer-tech.net and feel free to contact us at any time at info at beamer-tech.net. Thanks so much.